Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be talking to you about the best watches to be buying in 2024 or at least tell you which watches we're buying for ourselves and what we think is worthy of keeping for the future. Now there are a lot of reasons why people buy watches and um, the most obvious ones being of course either they like watches and they want to buy something nice to wear on their wrist or some people like to invest in watches. Now whatever it is this video is going to be relevant. What we like to do at Watch Collectors is we like to collect rare and collectible watches. That doesn't necessarily mean you need a wealth of knowledge in order to get rare and collectible watches. And today what we have is we have a modern example and a vintage example. And I think it's the perfect examples to use in order just to get the point across that you can have something that is rare and collectible even if it's still in production. Let me show you exactly how. I mean, one of the watches I have here is a Patek Philippe Nautilus Perpetual Calendar 5740 in white gold. Now, as beautiful as this watch is, it's not just its beauty that made us put it away. One of the things that we like is we like investing in watches. So whilst we call ourselves watch collectors, yes, we are collectors, we do collect watches. But to be frank, we collect watches with value in mind. Ultimately, at the end of the day, we are a business and the goal is to make money. So we're always looking for rare watches that we believe will go up in value in the future. And that tends to always push you towards vintage watches. But I feel like this is the perfect example to show you today. A Patek Philippe Perpetual Calendar 5740, the very first and currently the only perpetual calendar Nautilus ever made. For us, we see it as a perfect place to park money. And the reason is, it's because it's the very first perpetual calendar. There's a good chance that this could become discontinued or be the only perpetual calendar Nautilus ever made. Discontinued, of course, is going to raise the value of it, but that's not guaranteed. And this is the thing, I hate speculating. And speculation, whilst it can take you places, but it can also drown you. I'm not gonna buy this watch and keep it on the basis of, oh, one day it might be discontinued, so I'm going to hold it, especially not for the money that it costs to purchase a six figure watch. But what is guaranteed is that it is the very first perpetual calendar Nautilus. That is never gonna change. Whether it's the last one or it's not, it's never gonna change the fact that it's the first one. So buying this watch and putting this watch, meaning that we bought a small piece of history. Now let's put history aside and talk to you a little bit about the watch because I don't want this video to be all about money. It's also a beautiful watch for what it is. And I feel like whilst it is a six figure watch, relatively you get your money's worth compared to what's out there so it's an ultra thin nautilus just like the 5711 for example it's got a very low profile this is very similar to the 5712 in fact it has the same base caliber which is the caliber 240 probably one of the best calibers Pateks have ever produced and whenever you see an ultra thin complication like the 3940 and so on so different renditions of that perpetual calendar or anything that you see that has a moon phase power reserve a lot of complications going on in an ultra thin case it tends to be a base caliber of 240 and it just gives the ability to the watch to be very thin and and delicate and beautiful i really hate chunky big cases and this to me really stands out as a beautiful feature of the watch and of course, it's very noticeable here. You've got the off-centered 22 karat rotor, which is of course a signature of the Caliber 240. But another thing to point out is the dial itself is beautiful, very symmetrical, and everything is very well placed. Whilst it's a very complicated watch, from a distance, it doesn't look very busy. And as you come close, you start to really admire everything that is going on there. And I'm a big fan of complicated watches. And one of the best aesthetics on this is as simple as it is the moon phase and that really makes it pop and stand out so now i'm going to take you over to adam who's going to be showing you a beautiful vintage watch so i've got a special piece of rolex history here this is a rolex 6265 in 18 karat yellow gold now rolex released for daytona back in 1963 it was McGrath daytona this one is special because it's a 6265 in 18 karat yellow gold now most of these watches were made in steel both this and the 6263, which is its sister Daytona. What makes it special is there's believed to be around less than 2,000 in yellow gold. So that's one of the reasons why it's very collectible today. Also, it's the fact that this was one of the last 
productions of manual wind Daytonas that Rolex ever made. So back during the quartz crisis, no one wanted manual wind watches and many of these used to sit back in the ADs unsold for many years and many of them that's why when we get a lot of customers they're confused because they see that the watch is from 1982 for example and then on the papers it has 1985 because it's been sold so many years later because it wasn't popular now these were made in 14 karat and 18 karat and there's less than 2000 like i said so back in america a lot of these watches they preferred it in 14 karat so seeing an 18 karat is a lot rarer due to the fact that they were produced in such little numbers this is what makes them so rare and collectible today to boost the price up and when you compare it to some of the steel ones you see in auctions going for hundreds hundreds of thousands. This is a pretty good buy. And what I wanted to show you today is not following the herd. You know, some of these people have purchased these watches from brand new and actually kept them. Back in the days where nobody wanted a manual Daytona, like Adam said, these, these they just used to be left in drawers. And um, eventually, if those people kept the watches, those were the people that are laughing now. Why? Because they followed what they believed was a good taste. They bought watches that they enjoyed. And I always say, buy what you enjoy and you're never a loser. Whether the watch goes up or down in price, it doesn't really matter. So I'm not pushing this video to be an investment video. What I'm trying to say is that if you are value concerned, follow good taste, follow common sense, buy something that has strong historical value to it. And most likely down the line, you'd you'd be able to enjoy a watch that you bought it for enjoyment, but also it would retain its value and possibly make you a profit. But if you buy something with no history, and I don't wanna get specific into brands, but it really worries me when I see people spending hundreds of thousands of pounds on watches that look like toys, that belong to brands that hardly have any history. You know, I could be wrong. They, a lot of these people could be spotting something that we're not, but for now, I'm sticking with what I know and what we know is buying historical items like what we showed you today whether it's modern or vintage and that will always keep you safe and if you were to browse our website you'll see that we don't shy away from buying rare collectible items whether they're complicated or whether they're gem set and we do diversify quite a fair bit but that's what's kept us going for a very long time and that's when the market fluctuated a fair bit we were still able to buy back some watches and give the customer a profit now of course not on all watches but the rare and collectible items whilst the market did take a dip some of them remained going up and some of them only took a very small dip in comparison to the rest of the watches on the market. And that's why I like rare and collectible watches. And one thing before we end the video, whilst what we showed you here might seem like to buy something rare it has to be a six figure watch because yes, both of them are. That's not really the case. I just wanted to give two nice examples that are also quite striking and two watches that we were personally passionate about. There are plenty of examples that you can buy under £20,000, under £10,000, sometimes even under £5,000. They are fairly collectible and possibly have a very good future in the market. And that's what we're going to be concentrating on from now on on YouTube. One thing we're trying to shift the channel towards is moving towards watches that we are all passionate about here in this company. Very often we find ourselves sadly following the algorithm in order to get the numbers up. We don't sway our opinion, but we talk about watches that people want to hear about and we give our honest opinions on them. And what we find is that when we start to go into rare and quirky, unique watches, it doesn't get, well, let's say the attention that it deserves. But from now on, we're not gonna let that set us back. We're gonna share our true passion with you guys. The majority of our videos are gonna be about rare and collectible watches. And we hope that by sharing our passion, by showing how passionate we are about these watches, eventually it will educate people and it will get the traction that it deserves. And um, if you liked this kind of video, I hope to see you soon in the next one. In the meantime, take care.